Hey, Dawn. Hey, Paris. Hey. I was just starting to wonder if we had a meeting because I saw there was a huge thread about meeting times that I didn't read. Oh, yeah. No, 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 no. That was... <laughs> That was me trying to figure out maintainer circle stuff and then realizing that we literally have like a million meetings and then it just like snowballed into how can we do make this better? <laughs> <laughs> Hello, everyone watching the recording. <laughs> well, inside for you all. Yeah, async forever. Like <laughs> that's the, the TLDR there. <laughs> Oh my God, meetings have just gotten, I don't know. I just have so many Zoom meetings and I'm just so, so tired of them. This week has been better. Well, the last two weeks have been better because of the, the time zone confusion. So you all went to daylight savings. We have not. So all my <laughs> meetings are an hour earlier. So like, instead of being done at 7.30, I'm done at 6.30. It's pretty cool. Yeah, the... I feel like I'm just so overwhelmed that the only time I do get stuff done these days is when I'm, I'm in a meeting, you know, or like right before the meeting. It's like high school all over again, doing the homework. <laughs> Still not working. Okay. Doing the homework before the class. <laughs> oh, yeah. I've actually gotten a lot done this week because uh, a bunch of my team is in Oregon and it's spring break. So a lot of them have taken the week off. Oh, wow. So it's been really quiet and... I worked on the charter resource doc, Josh. I got a bunch of other stuff yeah, done. I, I, I recorded saw. my KubeCon talk. That is done. Oh, wow. Yeah. Well, the, I'm going to uh, be on holiday the next week. So the, the deadline is before I come back. So I needed to get it done this week. Yeah. The, um, yeah, Carolyn and I have not. <laughs> <laughs> she has a really nice set of slides, though. Yeah, it's been a pain. You got time. You got until April. Markdown. April 5th or something. Yep. The, um, yeah, well, except, except not again, because, you know, next weekend is Easter weekend and a bunch of my older relatives have finally all been vaccinated. So, um, I'm not going to be working next weekend. Yeah. The, um, which means that we really need to get our recording done in, by Wednesday next week. So I'm just prepping the agenda right now. So thank you. We can get going. Yeah, sorry. It's been it's been back to back meetings this morning and for that matter yesterday. The um, oh, good. now you know why I'm trying to preach that async life. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. The 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 we've been uh, we've been bad about like finalizing things, like approving things, etc. If it's not in a meeting. Um the um I feel more responsible than that. I mean, as a chair, than um, than the crew. I think, like, I feel like we as chairs need to just do a better job on mm -hmm. nagging, I guess, and nagging me and ourselves. But we can do that too and get better. Carolyn's here. Who else is here? Oh, just us. So, oh, Josh. Mm -hmm. All right, we've got our agenda. Y'all want to talk about what's going on in governance? Um, actually, before we start, when's our next TOC update meeting? Because that's the stuff we should. Uh, that's going to be next week because they. Oh, yeah. No, wait. Yeah, it's normally the third week, right? And this yeah, week okay. they had an emergency meeting about SIG observability issues. So, okay. update meeting so got postponed till next week. And so we actually need to do the updates. Um, All right, well, but let's if talk we about go, governance. Yeah talk okay. about governance from a from a perspective of like what we want to talk to the TOC yeah. about and like what's been going on. I'll write okay. the notes. Um, we approved and merged the subproject template. Um, so something to let governance know is available. Um, and so that kind of completes the set of governance templates that we plan on, except of course that last week somebody pointed out something that was missing from all of the templates. Um, but I, you know, we're going to treat that as a separate change. Um, the um, and that doesn't need to be brought up. We can just say we finished the subproject template, so we now have sort of a quote unquote complete set 
of what do we tell them about review because remember i thought we were supposed to like graduate before we merge yeah so so in those terms in terms of graduation the sub project template was actually reviewed by sod um the um i as far as i know you know and um i think we need to really write out the process for the sort of different kinds of documents you know because as far as i'm concerned having either the SIG or a working group formally approve a document and then having one of our TOC liaisons approve it. That feels like sufficient process for me. I mean, that's kind um, of what we have right now, yeah. except so SOD's only approved the sub project one though, right? And we have about like six other docs that are merged. Right, I don't know the status of any of the other docs. I know that yeah. um, earlier on um, SOD, no, not SOD, Matt looked at the other two governance templates. Okay, um, I passed Alina a lot of the stuff yesterday. So I'll yeah. catch up with her to see if she can LGTM the retroactive issue that we have for the docs that are already completed and merged. Yeah, we should have invited her to this meeting. I've just been so like, like specifically invited her. She um, couldn't come, I did. Oh, okay. Oh, good. You're on top of this. The, um, <laughs> I'm not. Hey, Paris. Does this mean going forward, every single thing we merge has to get a TOC review or? It has to have our liaison, at least one liaison review. If it's going to end up on the website, it does. Yeah. Because they want to make, we want to make sure that it adheres to the values that the TOC is trying to portray. I mean, we are an advisory group of them. Oh. So we're advising, we're advising them that these things are what so you think I'm just checking on what I should be holding off on merging right. or like yeah we should add them as as a code owner or something um I'm not sure the, because uh well it, I can, it's hard to tell right now what needs it and yeah. what doesn't well do you want to set up a branch structure for this because that would be the, the the standard sort of get way to do things is to actually have uh, a you know a publication branch and that that none of us you know, merge things to the publication branch until they've been approved by our liaison. I'm down with that. That's like amazing. I just that, don't think we've gotten there yet. Because like, right, I think yes. our first step was well, to update the charter with what we want right. and then do the do the next yeah. bit. So I'm down with whatever yeah. you just, okay. whatever you decide there. Um, Carolyn, so what branch are you pulling from for the website? Website is ruining my will to keep working sometimes um because it's taking yeah. so long uh right now it's in a branch called website um okay. it's on two repos you know Eeyore reviewed the one that's on cncf contribute and he wants it so that uh it can get merged and not assume that the website is live which changes a bunch of links so i need to go fix that um and that's not easy so i need to do some thinking about how that'll look and work. Um, Cause in the meantime, that like kind of breaks what we wanted the website to look like. So this may be a couple PRs. We're gonna okay, do you wanna, do you wanna share that out? Because I mean, to be perfectly blunt, I'm willing to appeal Ehor's decision sometimes. Okay. E Ehor does make decisions, particularly in technical matters that does not necessarily think about the consequences of them. Cause like, uh, I feel so like- So his decisions are not final. We keep trying to stage this somehow and then rolling it out without impacting anything, but we also want a whole bunch of review to happen, but the review is not happening. So like, it's gonna stay stuck for a very long time. And like, so when I first did it, we kind of talked about, we're just gonna merge these two PRs at the same time and have a website. We don't switch over the domain, but the website's live. But that means that for a period of time, like between, if you don't merge them at the same time or you don't flip, the domain or whatever, like basically in a day or something, you're gonna end up with weird links that go don't go to the right place because they assume it's gonna be hosted at the URL it's hosted at. So it makes sense. But like in the meantime, it's like, can you read it on the GitHub or does it have to be rendered in the site? Um, that that's kind of what's from my perspective, that's what's causing a bunch of stuff to just be going nowhere. Um, and I don't think I've gotten a review on anything from the PR to SIG contributor strategies repo. 
can you do me a favor and lazy link those PRs on um, either in the chat uh, and I'll yeah. make sure that this gets done sure. today. Yeah. Yeah. And please share those conversations, the technical details conversations with Ehor as well. Okay. Yeah. Plus one, um, please. Because, because really, I mean, honestly, you know, I've been in the position before with stuff like DevStats where I have gone to, to CRA to overrule Ehor and things. Okay. Um, because he's asked me for things that would have involved, you know, 80 hours of work by somebody. Um, yeah, so. like if it had been small, and I thought maybe it would be small, but like it, yeah. it, just the yeah. coordinating the fact of switching from reading it on GitHub to reading yeah. it on a well-done domain is mm -hmm. uh, making this difficult. So yeah. I've linked both uh, PRs. Okay. Um, because there's always lag between when I ask people re for reviews and when I've rebased it last on on the main branch, like we shouldn't actually merge these immediately because it probably needs more rebasing because more stuff is moved around. You know what I mean? And I had to move files to get this to work. So if we get approvals, then I'll do another rebase and like update everything. Okay. But it's getting to be a lot of work to rebase it over and over and over again. And then <laughs> well, why don't you tell right? Why don't you tell us where those files need to be? Because I mean, our directory structure, for example, is is was fairly arbitrary and for initial convenience it's not like we're attached yeah to so with let me share my screen let's look at what the structure should be is let me just go to the branch i kind of set it up so that um we have a website directory and a bunch of stuff is, is actually going in this now because um, this is what gets rendered off of um, Hugo. So for maintainers, we have a section about community and that's like where Project Health went because Project Health went live, right? But I think we have a couple more as well. Um, so this is where things would end up needing to be and they wouldn't quite be directly one-to-one -one underneath each. Mm -hmm. um, working group anymore um so like i'm behind because there were files that you know have been added since that would need to be brought into the content directory why are there two files called paperwork checklist i messed up <laughs> okay i'm like well I, my first thought was did i do that the um... uh, no it looks like <laughs> it i like the sort of thing i would do no, the, it looks um, like I typoed. <laughs> okay. Yeah, um, yeah. Yeah. No. Yeah, and I and I actually need to go through that because the paperwork checklist specifically needs to not be on the website yet. That is specifically not approved. Okay. Um, that led off to an argument between me and Liz Rice about the sandbox form being the canonical source of information. Um, okay. The, um, so, well, I can just remove it then. That, yep. Yeah, that so definitely fixes it. that problem. Yeah, we can't we can't publish that yet. Yeah, but the yeah. trick is essentially content needs to yeah. be in here. Right. And then yeah. if we want something to be a draft that mm -hmm. isn't live yet, it's it's mm -hmm. um you put it in the markdown. Okay. So I don't know which ones of these is a draft yet. Yeah. I uh, mean but essentially you'd put like one of these would be draft true. Okay. The top here. And then it wouldn't go be published to the site, but it would at least be in the right spot. So when we're ready to flip it, we don't have to move a file. Okay. So we could we could use branches or not use branches or just use the draft tag, depending on what we want to do. The yeah. um I mean my inclination is to use branches because often I'm editing several files at the same time. Um so but I mean you can still used, edit felt like files felt like using the draft time. tag, then it would work too. Um, it's just right now we've been iteratively merging things into a folder called draft, you know? Yeah. So the no, folder called draft collaborate. does not really work, right? Yeah. The, so uh, one thing you can do is if you put draft on this, it won't get published, but it can at least be in the main branch and collaborate and work on it over time. Because our drafts right. live for months and having a long standing branch, I think would yeah. be hard to manage. Not really, but, but, but we can- It's up to you if you want to do that management. Right. <laughs> yes, it it right. We can enable both paths. Yeah, is what I'm saying. Um, the um, so okay. 
That's fine. So, I mean, I think one of the things that we can do ahead of resolving, you know, the EHOR requirements and everything else is um, let's move our actual documentation structure to match the website structure so you're not rebasing all the time. Plus one. Do you want to do that outside of this pull request? Because this did, you know, basically do a bunch of the moves or. Okay. That's fine. Like I can just rebase and move things. And then if we merge. Yeah this first. That's fine. And there that will. means, by the way, that's something to put in an update to the TOC, which is, hey, we're rearranging the website. We're rearranging our repository to match the structure needed by the website, which means some of your old links won't work. Yeah. And and I'll, I'll um, if you needle me after today, because the rest of my day is 100% back-to-back meetings. Um, I, I will also add that to like our readme and stuff. Um, the, um, so, um, yeah, because there's no reason to, to keep adding this work onto you yeah. um, because we're going to do it eventually. And if we yeah. do it now, then that's less work to do later. Agreed. Yeah, yeah. So I can do one more rebase right now and then uh, nudge everybody. And then if we, yep. We merge it. I mean, like nothing goes live, right? And yep. then, yeah, you know, we can just kind of move forward, not have to worry cool. about this. Okay. Um, wow. So that got off on the website, but but I think what else? Oh, for governance, okay. the other thing for governance is uh, we're now working on a draft. Uh, Dawn primarily um, uh, is working on a draft of charter suggestions. Um, you know, advice to. Um, the um, projects on creating charter information, um, uh, which we're vaguely looking, once we actually have the support for it, vaguely looking at, at adding to the list of CNCF requirements for, say, graduated projects. I just dropped but, the link in the notes. Yeah. But we want to have the what is a charter? How do you write one before we start telling projects that they need to have one? Even though I realize the CNCF way is to usually do it in, in the reverse order. So if you have any feedback on that doc, that would be great. Did you get a chance to look at it, Josh? I saw you were in the doc. Uh, yes. Yeah, I opened it up. I looked at it and that was as far as I got. Okay. Um, it contained everything that we talked about, and, and that was about as far as I got. Okay. Yeah, because I, I reorganized it into those, um, you know, into multiple sections because I had everything kind of lumped yeah. together. So I think it's I think it's a lot better organized now and a little clearer. Yeah. So. All right. Last call for governance alcohol. I think that's it. That's what we've been doing in governance. Right. Eat a bomb. And then Carolyn, you're on for contributor growth. I mean, obviously feel free to continue with website stuff. Um, but anything else you want to mention to TOC? Um, we're just putting together the KubeCon talk, I guess. That's the that's the biggest thing. Remember, we're, we're gonna record early next week. Um yeah. I'm trying to think. To be honest, like I lost people on my team and I have way too many things on my plate right now. So I haven't been able to do much around contributor growth other than the talk lately. Right. I, I know the feeling I've had a rec open to have somebody split Red Hat's cloud native projects with me. Yeah. And I was just informed last month that the rec got stolen by somebody else. Yeah, yeah, we lost the rec and I'm not getting it back, but I still yeah. have twice as many commitments as we did with more people, so. Uh -huh. It's been really, I'm just letting you know, like where I'm at. It's yeah, I, like, I, I had understand. time to work on this and now it's been taken yeah. away from me. <laughs> yeah. So, so I'm sorry, go ahead, Josh. Uh, I was going to add something to contributor growth, but go ahead. I was just going to say, A, how can I personally help? I mean, obviously professionally, how can I help? And B, how can we put a word out horn on anything that you're working on that you want to see more help with? I think we're just having trouble. I don't have time to do thorough reviews and, and like edit and contribute to these, these docs that we're writing yep. right now. 
So okay. if other people Some have rise. time to do yeah. that, okay. yeah, that'd be really helpful. Cause I know, I feel like my participation is holding up the contributor ladder, for example. I, from my perspective, you actually did give us some feedback on the contributor ladder. I'm actually waiting for Karen's full feedback because okay. this has been her baby as much as mine. So that's the other thing. But, but my goal is for us to approve the contributor ladder by next week's contributor growth meeting. Um, so right. I'm gonna, gonna ping her about it again. Because the thing is, it's not like, it's not like a document doesn't have a lot of her input already. It's just, I really need her to do a final check on it because I made a lot of changes in the last round. Um, the, um, so I'd like to finalize that next week because it's, you know, A, it's something a bunch of organizations have been asking for. B, I've already put it into play with an existing project because they couldn't wait. Um, and, um, and also several of our governance templates have references to the contributor ladder. So kind of, you know, between all of those things, we, we kind of want it yesterday. So I'd like to get it to being approved by the working group on Tuesday, and then the remaining pending thing being TOC, TOC liaison approval. Um, if we want to try to approve it by Tuesday, we need to get the edits in of changing maintainer specializations to a, a, an additional document that isn't the template. Okay, right. And so our last discussion of that on Slack was, I was suggesting that we don't actually do the additional document at all. Just want um, to scrap all that. Because I was trying to write the additional document and I was finding it impossible to write. Okay. And, and when you find something impossible to write, it's often because it turns out it was actually a bad idea. Um, the, um, and so my suggestion for that is I just put that in as a note in the main document saying, hey, you might have these maintainer specializations depending on your project and here's a list of them, but the actual mm -hmm. requirements for them are gonna be very specific to your project. Because like I started mm -hmm. out with say documentation maintainer because I have a good example of that from Kubernetes. And I'm like, okay, let me take the Kubernetes requirements for documentation maintainer and try to make them generic. And when I eliminated everything that was particularly specific to Kubernetes, mm -hmm. I was left with nothing. Okay. So the, um, and so I'm like, you know, I don't think this is really something we can template. I think if projects do need specialty maintainer types, but they're very tied to how the project operates. Is the most yeah. important piece there just to tell them to document yes. it? I feel like, yeah, that, I feel like that is yeah. the most important part to hit home is like, as long as there is something written about the actual ladder. Yeah. Yeah. I think the, the reason why we originally wanted to try to include content like this somewhere as output from our group is because people are familiar with I'm a maintainer, I sling code, um, but these other uh, types of activities and roles aren't getting adequate representation or are being downplayed compared to code. And so it was an aspiration to somehow uh, try to help address that, I guess. But yeah. if it's not working, I don't want this to hold up the whole ladder. Yeah, well, the thing is for a smaller project, if you look at what I have in there is the definition of maintainer in general, mm -hmm. that does not exclude documentation maintainers, right? It doesn't say nowhere on it, does it say that a maintainer has to write code or review code. It says okay. that they have to review stuff, Yeah. but, but it's very generic in saying what stuff is. Um, okay, the, and yeah, and I think I think advocating for having calling out non-code roles is something that really belongs in an advisory document, which we can write later. Okay, so maybe let's just add, I'll add something that says we want right. something that just talks yeah. about non-code roles. Yeah, because one of our big to-dos is that we actually ought to have a more narrative advisory document to go with each one of, of our templates, like all yeah. of them. Um, and so that could go in there, right? As we could say, hey, here's some examples. Here's the Kubernetes documentation maintainer. Here's the program manager for Linkerd. Here's, you know, all of these other roles that people have, but these are, you know, we're only going to link because they're not templatable. 
I think adding that as resources at the bottom, an exhaustive list of other people's templates that we think are, are, are awesome resources and examples is required. Like, I feel like that's in practice, yeah. you know? Um, so yeah, I think like, especially like the Porter, Kubernetes, et cetera. Um, I think that would be really good. So we also have con the contributor framework um, that Catherine and, that Catherine and folks have been working on that also is kind of review lists. And that's also, again, me as well. Um, so I'm gonna put some eyeballs on that based on what I'm seeing and what we know now that we have contributor ladder as well as um, a draft of the recruiting playbook. It sounds like we're going in this direction where we want this contributor framework to be this umbrella and then have all of these other contributor related docs, not necessarily governance, um, but those two docs specifically included inside of those in, inside of that framework model. Do I have that correct? Just trying to look I, at this. Program. I don't know. I haven't been working on the framework, so. Okay. Because I look, I, I've been, I I've been to figure framework. out our content strategy, to be honest. Yeah. What you laid out isn't actually something we ever explicitly said. <laughs> yeah, and that, that's exactly, so that's why I'm, I'm bringing it up right now, because that's kind of where I'm seeing this evolving and going. Um, because the framework that Catherine put together is sort of this like, umbrella of like all of the different kinds of sections and like it seems kind of like you know what you're doing for governance too where you just like break off each section with like there's the narrative and then there's the templates um that's just what it looks like um from just like a higher level i did review the framework part two uh, oh. i'm just waiting to hear back on okay so I'll get, I'll get us some more eyes. We'll call them, I'm going to call them community eyes. <laughs> Not googly um, eyes. Um, like end user feedback eyes. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then sounds like that's it for uh, contributor growth. And then obviously eyeballs on the recruiting draft as well. All right. Uh, next is maintainer circle, which y'all saw in a thread yesterday with us going back and forth as to what the heck we're going to do here. Um, and what the heck we're going to do here really means a lot of the maintainers have been saying uh, to me that they have had a hard time following maintainer circle um, and that they want dedicated invites and that they want to be invited. Um, and all these other things. And the problem that we had before and we couldn't reach consensus on is like, should we have a dedicated meeting for this? A lot of people said, no, no more meetings. Let's try to incorporate it in our meetings. And then we try to do this like every other meeting thing, which doesn't work for Google calendars. Uh, so it's kind of like problem statement. How can we get them a dedicated invite without having a ton of overhead so what we came to is what we have in the um, what we have in the thread. So we'll start that. Um, I think we said like, as of May. So I don't think anybody here is going to see any differences or changes until then. But we will have a dedicated meeting for maintainer circle. Uh, maintainer circle, um, and that's really it. Uh, I'm looking for another host. Um, I'm sort of this like, I feel like I'm playing this role right now where I'm the backup. You know, if we don't have anybody else then I'm gonna, I'll step in, but I'd like to start really making this sort of like a, you know, for us like uh, maintainer done event kind of a thing. Um, yeah, and well, well, I can help host an individual event. I cannot track down and find speakers for things. At least, you know, not any time before August, because a, a good portion of my my main Red Hat duties are tracking down and finding speakers for things right now. When the good news is, I have <clears throat> we have managing grief and loss set right now. Uh, it's not set set, but um, we need to confirm we have a psychologist that um, works with maintainers 
not just like maintain, but folks in tech, but she has experience. She talked to KubeCon once. Um, so she's going to talk about that. And then we have a maintainer that I won't name that is going to come and probably do a fireside chat about her experience with um, managing um, open source work in a time where something um, not great happened to her child. So um, I think that'll be that'll be pretty nice. Um, she feels like she has a lot of like lessons learned from that experience. And um, so that's that. So you could host that one, Josh. It sounds kind of like uber depressing, but I think it might be uber worth it um, because it's not a conversation that we talk a lot about, but it's stuff that we obviously deal with, especially in this pandemic. So um, yeah, I can do, so I can pretty much spoon you stuff if you want to host, Josh. Okay, what, sure. what date is that? We don't we don't have one yet. We need to make it up. Um, yeah. So that's the one. That's one I think we'll have like whatever that May date is that we figure out for. Okay. For the new one. And to make sure, just let's not do the first week of May. Yeah, I know. That's KubeCon. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's good. I added yeah. uh, just in the notes. I added. I keep getting asked this question on can maintainers outside of CNCF projects attend? I think it'd be great if we could just address that in the invite or on the page so that um, we're not trying to, because it seems really unclear right now. So, well, do we want to vote on it? Um, I mean, as of right now, I said no. Okay. Can we just uh, put that then on the, the invite or something so people- But yeah, no, I mean, I'm open to hearing other thoughts. <coughs> well, there's a couple of arguments for yes and, and before one of them might not be valid. So I guess one of the questions is what has attendance been like out of just the CNCF maintainers? We seem to have about um, nine to 12 people each time, including yeah, the host. Yeah, we start and the off speaker. with 20 to 25. Yeah. The um, and I also uh, think that's because we haven't had a dedicated way of advertising or promotion. Yeah, yeah. So I think that's huge. Um, right. So, right. So getting getting more attendees just for the sake of having a large enough group for there to be conversational synergy is not necessarily um, something we need, or is it? I'm asking. Um, I don't know. Well, I, no, I, I'm asking you because yeah, I've I I've only made one of these things so far. I uh, and that one I'm, did have I, a lot of conversation. I I feel like once we get a good amount of CNCF folks, I mean, there's sixty plus projects, right? A thousand maintainers. Yeah. Most of the maintainers still have no idea that this exists. Yeah. Um. Okay. So that's the only thing. I mean, and the other thing is like some, most of the maintainers are sharing really personal stories during the fireside chat part. And I guess they would have to be okay with outside folks that don't abide by our code of conduct okay. coming in and potentially tweeting their stories. Okay. So given those, the only other group I feel like we should consider is what I would call pre-CNCF projects. That is projects that have already announced their intention to apply for a sandbox. I'm not saying we necessarily should do those. I'm saying that would be the the outside group to consider. Um, yeah. I, I think given what you're saying now, we don't want to consider opening this up to any maintainer anywhere. Yeah, I think mine just had to do really with the code of conduct. Mm -hmm. I have a quick question. We like the CNCF has the ability to message all the maintainers. Have they done that and notified people about the maintainers? Just circle? once. Just once, okay. Not something that they want to do regularly. Yeah, okay. Which is another okay. reason to have a yep. uh, reliable schedule, yeah. The, uh, yeah. That's kind of like their KubeCon hotline and that's really it. Oh, because I get something every like month or two about open talks with people at the CNCF and support staff. I don't know. I don't know anything about that one. I don't see yeah. those. Oh, yeah. I get an email from the CNCF like yeah, every it's, month about. You uh, get that if you signed up for the CNCF Speaker Bureau. No. No, no it's, it's like. Not, it's not that so, one? It's a line of support between 
maintainers of the CNCF project and the the support staff. So like Amy and everybody. Um, oh, incubated project. Oh, only? the project sync. Yeah, project sync. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. I wasn't quite sure what it was called. Yeah. yeah. Um, I usually I usually attend those, and if we have a maintainer circle coming up that I know the schedule for, I mention it to people. Great. Um, okay. And for that matter, if we remind, if we have one scheduled, we remind Amy about it, she'll mention it. Okay. Sorry, I was just trying to think of more avenues where yeah. we were already connecting with maintainers. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's yeah. a good idea. I wanted, honestly, I wanted the, just the calendar invite on that distro, meaning like invite maintainers at, and then you have it on an optional on your calendar. Mm -hmm. If you want to come, you come. Um, that's kind of what I always envisioned this as just like an open door for CNCF maintainers, all thousand, if they want to come in, they can come in. Um, but yeah, no, I, I do see like, I feel like it's been exclusive due to the fact of our reach is only so far. Um, so that's definitely been, I, and I met, I was talking to Karen about that extensively too, when yeah. she was, when she was you hosting. Know one of the other things that we can do once we work out the issues with making the website public is of course have a page on the contributor website for this oh 100 so people yeah. place for people to find the schedule yep the um so yep um, okay that's it for that and then so meta group stuff that i captured for us for some actions um I'm going to quickly draft some of the charter graduation review stuff that we talked about today um, that, incor that incorporates the TO like the TOC liaison stuff, like having one LGTM there. Um, and then also update the TOC with the new structure to match the website. Um, and then Josh, I think you said something about uh, helping out with some kind of GitHub setup, if I recall. Yeah. Um, there is an open uh, pool, or actually, no, I'm sorry, there is an open issue for you to do the pool request workflow anyway. Right, so. and, and that was partly dependent on what we were doing with the document for the website, so. Yep, um, doing PR uh, workflow. Yeah. And then did I miss anything as far as meta group stuff that needs to get done? Oh, actually new calendar invites, Amy. All right. I'm actually looking through our issues right now too to make sure nothing yeah. is falling through the gaps. So, so to finish up with the calendar thing, so Paris's proposal, which I think we can go forward with, was that we're going to do maintainer circle once a month. Um, on what are we doing it in the first or the third week of the month? I've forgotten now. I'm gonna. I'm getting out the exact what we said so that we don't do okay. the. <laughs> um, and then, and then do this meeting only on the alternate two weeks. So basically we only be having this meeting every four weeks. That depends on our ability to do queue clearing asynchronously. And if that really doesn't work out, then I'll be proposing adding a, a half hour queue clearing um, meeting at a different time. But hopefully we yeah. don't have to do that. Let's we and let it, me and you can, we can attack like some kind of Slack stand up together too. We can like rally the troops. So it is. Yeah, and then the, I, say, I guess that would be the other, right. That would be the other way to do this would be Slack stand up. And that would be very much better for people who are in non US time zones. So, so the official is first Thursday um, maintainer circle because first Tuesday is always SIG updates with TOC. And then third Thursday, our SIG meeting here. And then, you know, some kind of revolving Slack stand up. Right. Um, yeah, you know, if we're actually doing a Slack stand-up, we could theoretically do that once a week. Yeah, I mean, that's fine with me. Because all we need to do is just post items that are currently pending and who's currently responsible for them. Yep. Uh, and then that person could comment on what the status is. The Because um, um, in a lot of cases, people just need to be reminded that they hadn't finished their review on something. Um, yeah. 
And the good news is most of our issues are done. I'm like going through them right now. I'm looking at them right now, half of them. So we've got 26 issues open. I'm going to say half are closed and done. Um, What do we, um, what day of the week do we want to do that on? Doesn't matter to me. I I feel like I don't want to, I want to do it earlier than Thursday just because, you know, for like Dawn, this is Thursday night. Um, And I, you know, and if, you know, somebody's European and they're taking Friday off, then they're basically getting a ping on something they're not going to look at until next week. So maybe like Tuesday. Do it on the, do, do it on the Tuesdays that we don't have groups. So we don't, yeah. I like that idea. Okay. All right, now that's documented. So I stand up on uh, Tuesdays that aren't group days. And then uh, Paris to send a note to mailing list with changes. All right. Yay, team. Hey. (laughs) Everybody's tired. Oh, my gosh. You have no idea. (laughs) (laughs) I I think I have a very good idea, actually. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Uh, So did anybody actually see that horrendous PR that I did the other day that Dims got me out of? No. Oh yeah. The, what was it? One of the things where you rebase and you end up dragging in the entire history of the project. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> I'm familiar. I'm intimately I, familiar. I've, I've never I've, done that. Oh, I have not laughed yeah. that hard. This happened in another repo last week. Oh, what a mess! Actually. It was yeah. a mess, y'all. It was like, yeah. wait, I think I just checked everything in. <laughs> yes. The um. <laughs> we we have all been there. <laughs> Dim saint. The, yeah, actually, yeah. my my particular saint. favorite one was where I did a rebase that somehow backed out every commit in the project from the last six months. <laughs> That's beautiful. And it would be well, like, you know, that would be a lovely thing to do if I know how I did it, <laughs> right? Because there are times when you actually want to do that. And you end up spending an entire weekend doing that. And I'm like, if I had any idea how I did this, that would be a good git trick to keep, you know, around. But I have no idea how I did it. If you have a stale main and you rebase on main and then push up, you can delete hundreds and thousands of commits that have happened since you last. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, y'all. Yikes. Never That's done that either. Do. <laughs> you have no you know, idea how much it like. It took me so much to, to, to say, to send that in Slack. My, 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 like, I'm sitting there like, like, should I send this? I need to, I need to send this. Like, oh, yeah. <laughs> the, um, like, if, it, if it's any consolation, I have done that despite the fact that I have also been paid $400 an hour to fix somebody else's Git repo. <laughs> it doesn't, really I mean, Git, Git is a tool with notably absent guardrails. It's like Star Wars in the bottomless pits. <laughs> <laughs> it, it doesn't take a single character out of place can get you to a place where you can't figure out how you got there or how to get back. Honestly, that's where I am with one of the PRs that's in the that's in the queue right yeah. now for recruiting because it's still there's main there's a maintainer circle like weird update to it. Yeah. And it's clicked on yeah. the recruiting guide, and I have no idea how that how like I. Just yeah, have no idea. It, it's usually uh, because you were switching branches around and you couldn't keep track of what you'd added. Yes, um, and I accidentally, yeah. sa- I must have like, con- like command save yeah. or something. So, like, so for what it's worth, if, if you're doing your Git actions in Bash, um, I have a set of Bash profile scripts that give you little tags on your command line that say like how many changes you have that you've added and how many you haven't added and how many you haven't uploaded. Um, yeah, I do yeah that that's too. a really good visual cue for me because sometimes I'll look at that and I'll be like, wait, oh, I have 11 unsaved changes here. Um, I need to save those before I switch branches. Yeah. Um, the, um, <laughs> that's exactly uh, what it did. Yeah. So, <laughs> so embarrassed. The, um, Hello, recording. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> welcome to our Git Clinic. Welcome to our Git Clinic. Yeah. The, uh, you know, Git was designed to suit Linus Torvald's personal workflow. Oh, and the oh, fact no. that the rest it's of us so are using supported. it is kind of one of these <laughs> <other> <laughs> industry accidents. 
or he, didn't, he didn't mean it to work for anyone anyone else <laughs> i'm getting off here okay uh, so i'm gonna say 15 minutes before my next meeting it's like oh what do i do <laughs> bathroom break yeah Lunch. <laughs> can't wait to see y'all in person whenever yep. that see you, you soon bye everybody